Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. If, it's you, if you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Today I have a really common problem. In the previous video, I showed you how to diagnose this uh, fuel problem, the CP4 coming apart. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this repair. It's, it's not that difficult. I mean, it can be difficult in some places and require some special tools. So before we do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Let's go check it out. Okay, so for this repair, we are going to need this right here. There's the part number. This is a fuel contamination kit. There is a core, and it has to be returned in this box. I will show you all the parts as we get them out. First step, drain the coolant right through there, that little petcock, and uh, take off your degas bottle cap. So for getting in there to that petcock, it's really hard to get in there. So I like these right here, these little four inch Knipex Cobra pliers. These work fantastic for getting in there and getting that petcock opened up. Okay, so we're gonna go over what goes in this uh, fuel contamination kit. Uh, the first thing you have is you have your fuel line assembly here and this goes from the driver's side rail to the passenger side rail and to the high pressure pump right there. The next thing that you have is you have your low side fuel lines. Uh, if you get a kit from SNS Diesel uh, to not to prevent this fuel uh, contamination uh, in the future, you're going to be cutting this brand new uh, line assembly. Uh, I'll put a uh, a link to uh, something there you're gonna have your high pressure pump which is in there and we'll go over this when I get to it uh, you're gonna have your bag of injectors you're gonna have both fuel rails driver side fuel rail is way longer has a sensor and a um, and a regulator on it and then the passenger side rail just as a rail you're gonna have your bag of all the injector tubes and bolts to bolt it down and you're gonna have your return line assembly and that is all of this uh, the next thing you're going to need is right here, you're going to need your low side fuel pump and you're also going to need a box of fuel filters and you're going to need to do an oil change and coolant. So this is everything that goes in it. Now this is something that every shop makes a mistake of uh, is this. When you first get this kit. The injectors come in a box and the high pressure pump comes in a, in a box and the rest of it's just in here. Well, they don't tell you that you actually need this big giant box for the core. Uh, every shop I've ever known has always lost their first core uh, on this kit because they didn't keep this big giant box and they only returned the two small ones. So keep this box, put all your parts in there and uh, now let's get started tearing this truck apart. It's time. All right. So the, the two things that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove this, uh, this intake air tube. Uh, we got to get the fan clutch and drive assembly out. Uh, we're also going to need to take the upper intake off and the lower intake. I'm going to try to put a link to the video right over there. Hope it works on how to get this intake off. Uh, I show you how to take this intake off uh, when you're replacing this uh, a PCD breather. Uh, which you should definitely do if your truck has 100,000 miles or so. Uh, it is a maintenance item. All right, let's get started. Go ahead and get this stuff off, and uh, there you go. All right, just in case you uh, don't catch this in my other videos, so I disconnect this coolant hose assembly right here. It goes from the degas bottle, comes over here to the radiator, goes over here, and it goes to the EGR. Uh, I go ahead and disconnect it because uh, one time I was leaning over the hood, and, uh, and one of these T's broke uh, just by leaning on it. So get it out of the way, that way you don't have to worry about it. All right, so before I go any further, a couple really good things to get are a nice uh, styrofoam pad. This is from Snap-on, it's a pretty big one, like three feet. Uh, this works really good for like laying it across here and laying across so you don't get impaled by the hood latch, uh, things like that. Another good thing are these grippy mats right here. I put all my tools in here and I got a little magnetic one for my sockets. Once you have that off, uh, the next thing you're gonna wanna do, go ahead and start on this side here. You're gonna have uh, an eight millimeter bolt down there. Got a couple that hold this bottle on right there. You got uh, an eight for the power steering and a couple eights down here. And then you have a whole bunch of stuff clipped to the fan shroud. You gotta unclip all that. 
so we can get the top part of this fan shroud out of here. Uh, before you do that, you're going to go ahead and take your cold side uh, intake tube uh, uh, charge air. You're going to have your uh, your Marmon clamp down there. Uh, don't forget about those special snap-on sockets. And there is a connector connected to it. And then right here, all you're going to do is you're going to pop this clip up right here. Just pop it up and over. And then this slides off. This pulls off. Uh, this side pulls away. You get this cold side out and get this fan shroud out of here. To get the fan clutch out, you gotta go ahead and, uh, and loosen up your fan clutch nut here. It's the same as a six liter and a six four. Uh, this one is regular threads. Uh, the six four and a six liter, they are, um, they are right hand threads, so they go the opposite way. Um, but anyways, uh, you gotta disconnect your connector right there. And uh, you're gonna have to take out this one bolt that holds the bracket. Uh, let me see if I can show you that. That one bolt right down there. Uh, once you do that, your fan clutch will come out. Go ahead and take your belt off. You're gonna get your belt out of the way. Uh, I'll, I'll move it out of the way more. But uh, now we gotta take off this fan bracket right here. Uh, one of the bolts for the fan bracket is what bolts the bracket for the connector for the fan clutch, so you have that. Uh, I think there's five of these bolts. Uh, and then this whole bracket's gonna come off and that's gonna give us access to the vacuum pump here. Uh, and then back to, back to this, if you refer back to the beginning, I said to remove the upper intake and the lower intake. Going to go ahead and get all that off and we'll be exposed to the fuel system. You're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect your vacuum, uh, your vacuum line that goes from here to here and then it goes from here over to there. Uh, next you're going to go ahead and take this nipple off right here. And we got to get this uh, 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 vacuum pump off. It's got four eight millimeters around the perimeter. Uh, use an air nozzle and blow this out real good because uh, it's going to be dust. And we're going to be going directly into the timing cover and this will access the gear for the high pressure that, that drives the high pressure pump. Here, we got it off now. So you can see now, these are the things that you wanna look for on your truck or a truck, trucks, is uh, you see down there, you can see that this, uh, this oil line, you can see that the fitting is leaking. Looks like the pedestal for the turbo is leaking. Now, another thing you're gonna have to do is this coolant turbo, the turbo coolant line. If you haven't re replaced this yet, now is a good time to do it. The fitting at the turbo leaks and the coolant line to the fitting leaks. You're going to have to disconnect it over here where it goes to the coolant crossover. So it's a good time to replace it now, but I disconnect it right there. Next up is the radiator hose. That needs to get taken off the upper hose. There's a clip on each end. Mine's leaking, so I need to replace it, but remove it. So this is the pump right here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector off of the, the valve on top of the pump. We're going to disconnect the low side lines. There's an 8 millimeter there. You're going to come up top. You're going to have to take your fuel filter out. Disconnect all your fuel lines up there. Uh, and then there's also some 8 millimeters along the valve cover to get this low side fuel line assembly out. To get this supply tube out you have to take out this you have to take out this it's kind of a long process so we're going to disconnect there's a bolt here there's some bolts over here on this side there's some sensors here some different connectors i can't go over everything uh, because it's too much you're going to be taking out the oil fill cap which is a uh, one bolt right there uh, you need to take out these uh, sound insulators on both sides uh, there's five on each side and they look like this and most of the time they break. I can't believe the first one came out. And then there's one on the top here, one on the top on the back, and then like I think there's three along the bottom on each side. Uh, we gotta get the fender wheels out. Uh, the fender wheels aren't hard, I'm not gonna go over that. Um, you're supposed to take out this uh, exhaust pipe. I, I do it without taking out this exhaust pipe because these bolts break and sometimes you can't drill them out. I've had to replace the exhaust manifold because of a broken bolt that I couldn't drill out. Um, but we're gonna do it without taking this out. I'll show you that when we get to it, but basically this supply tube assembly right here with the fuel lines, I take it apart and I put them in piece by piece. Uh, I'll show you how I do that. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and take out uh, both of the wheel liners and we're gonna get these sound insulators out to get to access to all these bolts. And there's a... Uh, on this, for this fuel assembly right here, uh, this pipe right here is attached to a pipe that goes back. And uh, there's a, 
you can see that braided line right there. Uh, that is attached to a fuel connection down on the fuel rail. And we can't get to that without taking all this apart. Once you have the passenger side wheel well out, you can uh, see quite a bit over here. All right, so there's that insulator right there. And on this side, every one has broken. I have one in the middle to get off. Uh, for this side, you have to remove the glow plug module. It goes right here. Uh, you got like one connector here, and then there's two connectors over here that I folded away. Uh, I like to use my uh, my carbine tools uh, socket. It's a T27. It looks like this. Three screws that go up underneath the washer bottle. Get those out, and then get that sound insulator out. So once you have the sound insulator off on this side, you can see the whole fuel rail. Uh, this fuel rail is a lot smaller. Uh, you got your glow plug harnesses that uh, that clip on right here where the lines go on. Uh, you got your glow plug uh, connectors and you have all your fuel tubes. Uh, right up here is the EGR cooler. I'm not gonna take that out. Um, the procedure says to take it out. I don't like to take it out, it's just a can of worms. Uh, and so I can feed this fuel line up under the EGR cooler and get it out uh, without taking the EGR cooler off. So that's what it looks like right there. There's the, there's the uh, number, uh, that's yeah, so the number eight injector right there. So let me go get the other side off. So the driver's side, what you want to do to make it easier, uh, go ahead and disconnect uh, a bulkhead connector here. Disconnect this, disconnect this, and pop the clips. And, uh, and that way you can move this harness out of the way. And then you're also going to want to um, undo this bolt right here and just drop this uh, steering shaft out of the way. It's just something you don't have to deal with. You can kind of move it out of the way and get some access. And we can pull this uh we can pull these harnesses out of the way once you've got your wheel well out you can access that connector down there with the green and uh there's two bolts that hold the fuel rail uh just two little eight millimeters and then you have the 13 up top and then you gotta watch out for your turbo your turbo vacuum line here but then you pop it out down there it's an eight millimeter Pop it out. You can go ahead and uh, walk this guy out. So you're supposed to replace this fuel line assembly. So if you're not doing a fuel contamination kit and you're just replacing your pump for whatever reason, you're taking it out. I had to pull one out because I had a leaking uh, oil seal up front. Um, you can take off the bracket here at the back of the pump and you can undo the lines. And some people don't replace this line assembly uh, I always do, I always recommend it. Um, with this one you have to because the contamination kit, but all you got, once you have those uh, those out right there, you just get two uh, 17, I think there's two 17s or 19s on each side. And then we'll have to get over here to the vacuum pump and we're gonna have to roll the engine over and get it in time. So from here you're gonna disconnect all your fuel lines. So we need to get these big fuel line assemblies out, but we also need to get all the fuel lines off. So what you can do for the lines at the rail on the driver's side is just use a crow's foot like that with a wobble. You can break them all loose. Um, and then for the injectors, you can use a 19 crow's foot, but it's hard. Uh, I have these uh, SP tools to two, two set uh, with two different ones. what it looks like right there there's the part numbers uh, it's two different designs and it's designed for these injectors uh, so I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna get all the injector tubes off and we got to try just try to get everything disconnected so we can get this uh, fuel line assembly out so we've exposed most everything for the pump now what we got to do is we got to get this fuel rail is almost all the way disconnected uh, I just got to unbolt it. I've got all the fuel lines undone. Now make sure that you notice this sticker right here, this white sticker. Now that white sticker, it has what's called QA codes. Well, IQA, Injector Quantity Adjustment Codes. And that is a code for each injector. So what that means is that we are going to, and those are the original ones. So we're going to remove that sticker and put a new sticker. And the new sticker is going to have the IQA codes for injectors one through eight, which we're going to replace. I will show you the best way to notate that and to keep from getting it mixed up. Now, the procedure calls for removing the, I, the, the EGR cooler. 
I don't like to remove the EGR cooler because it's just one more thing that I have to worry about. And also to do that, you have to remove this exhaust pipe right here. And this bolt right here, it breaks 99% of the time. I don't like to drill it out. I've had to replace this exhaust manifold a few times because of that bolt. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this battery tray out. Uh, I went through the wheel well, but there's not a lot of access through there. And, it, and, and um, doing the injectors is gonna be quite difficult trying to uh, remove them and torque them uh, through the wheel well. Let me show you what that looks like. So here we are in the wheel well. So we have this big giant AC line in the way. I've gotten most everything disconnected here except for the fuel lines at the injectors. And then you can see that this fuel line right there, that one is coming from the high pressure pump. Next step, we're gonna remove this vacuum pump. There's four eight millimeter bolts. And then we have to roll the engine over and we have to time it. I'll show you what that looks like. As you can see here with this battery tray out, um, I think the battery tray is a lot easier to remove than the EGR cooler. The only tricky part about doing this without removing the EGR cooler, like I said, is this one line we have to fish it through. I'll show you how I do that. But right here on the fuel rail, all the bolts are all the all the the, the lines are 17 millimeter, and all the lines on the injectors are 19s. And we're going to go ahead and disconnect all the connectors. And once you do that, and you've disconnected your all your lines then these little U uh, clips come off and then your glow plugs stay connected and your harness drops down below your, your fuel rail. And all these injector tubes are gonna get thrown away. You have to replace them, they are one-time use. And that back one you have to get through the wheel well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this. So the low side, I'll show you how to remove the return line connectors. Let me try to zoom in here so you can see. Okay, so right there is the return line. Okay, right there. So this center part pulls up. Once you pull this all the way up, now I can pull it off of the injector. You can see that. See if I can do this one on, on camera, but I probably won't be able to. Nope, I can't. All right. Okay, so fuel rail is out. Uh, the only tricky one is this bolt back here because it's in the way of the AC line, but it's just two 13 millimeters. Uh, and then this comes right out. You're gonna be replacing that, so don't worry about it. Uh, once you get all your uh, injector tubes and your fuel rail out, uh, then you just have to take the injectors out. Be really careful because these bolts do break uh, and you get new ones with your kit. Let me get some out and I'll show you the easy way to remove these injectors without a special tool. So here is the trick. You have your hold down here and once you've taken your bolt out, the hold down looks like this and upside down it looks like this. So I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna take this hold down and I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna push it up into the injector. It's gonna be really hard one-handed, but I'm gonna try it and see if it can show you how to pop it. And then you're just gonna put, okay, so you're gonna put something in there like that. Let's see if I can show this. I don't know if it's gonna work with one hand, but we're gonna try. It didn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna try this this way. So you're just gonna put something right there. And you're just gonna hit it. And then there we go. The injector popped, just like that. That's how you remove it with no special tools. Okay, so a couple things about this side over here is there is a rubber seal in the valve cover uh, and they're common to leak. Uh, the other side is actually leaking, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of those rubber seals. Uh, but one thing happened on this that you gotta be careful of is when you pull your injector out, you see how you have this uh, copper O-ring at the top. That's what seals the injector from the combustion chamber. So this is the, the front one. This is the second one. 
The third one, copper washer stayed in the in the cylinder in the bore, and the fourth one. So now I got to use a pick, and I got to get those copper washers out of there. And we also need to make sure we clean up the end of that bore because there's going to be a new copper washer on each injector, and that's what seals it. If you have any garbage there, it won't seal, and then you'll have drivability problems, uh, all kinds of stuff. All right, so as you can see, there's a space there between the injector bore and the valve cover, and the copper washer dropped down into the head, so now I have to remove the EGR cooler and the valve cover and find the copper washer. This is the worst case scenario. Usually the copper washer comes off with the injector. So now we're gonna remove the EGR cooler. Uh, to do that, you gotta disconnect the hoses. So I went ahead and marked my coolant hoses here. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect those. Uh, you got the vacuum line to the solenoid here. You got your wiring you gotta undo. And you gotta undo the, the, the retainers for the harness around the front of it. The, the scariest part of the whole thing is this bolt right here. Uh, because this bolt breaks most of the time. Uh, I was very fortunate it did not break. Uh, my advice is loosen it a little bit and then tighten it. And then loosen it and tighten it. Loosen it and tighten it. And, uh, and spray, you know, spray PB Blast in there and uh, let it sit. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these coolant hoses and disconnect the perimeter bolts and we're gonna get this uh, EGR cooler out of here so we can get to the valve cover. All right, here's the EGR cooler off. So you have uh, three perimeter bolts on the, on the outside there. You have three perimeter bolts on the outside here. You have a bolt in the center. You're gonna have a couple bolts for the harness over here. You're gonna have a couple coolant hoses. And uh, back here, you're gonna have a retainer for, um, uh, right here, you're gonna have a wiring harness retainer you have to push off. Uh, you're gonna have another retainer on here. And then you're also gonna have, uh, uh, it's up there, the small uh, little uh, 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 sensor for the tube that goes to the rear exhaust. And then you just gotta pry it up. It's got a couple pins and then you're off. All right, so pulling the valve cover on this job is not abnormal because uh, uh, like I said before, the injector hold down bolts, they're actually common to break too. Uh, so I've actually had to pull the valve cover off um, to uh, weld a nut on the stud to get it off. So from here, uh, you saw that this, this part of the pipe was easy to get out. We're replacing that anyways. Oh, so from here, we just need to pull out the glow plug uh, connectors and um, gonna have to pull the harness away uh, in a few places right around here. Um, another thing that you wanna do is replace these rubber seals because they will leak when you're done and it'll be on you. Uh, and then you have a few perimeter bolts. Now, when we get this off, it's gonna be kinda cool because the intake manifold comes through the valve cover. So this is actually the intake manifold comes up through here. It's actually pretty cool. And then that's where the EGR cooler mounts. So that's the two seals you're gonna need for the EGR cooler. And we're gonna need a valve cover gasket and I already have these rubber seals. So let's get this off. All right, so here's the back side of the underside of the valve cover. So you have right here, uh, the, the crankcase area right here. This is in the cylinder head. And then this is where the intake manifold where the air collects up top comes across here and uh, EGR cooler goes through here so there you go and good news is there's my copper washer right down there all right so from here I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and get a valve cover gasket I got to get some gaskets and uh, finish doing the fuel system so there's the back side of the pump We've got it just about ready to come out. We've got to take off this bracket right here. It's got two eight millimeters. Uh, that's for the fuel lines. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and we gotta get the vacuum pump off. And that's it. That's all we have left on the fuel system in the engine compartment. Okay, so once you have the vacuum pump off, this is the timing right here. So as you can see, this is the, the, the main gear in the center. So there's one mark at the top and then there's two marks. So when you time this thing, you want to make sure that it's the single mark and it lines up with the double mark on the injection pump uh, sprocket. So I'll go show you. Mine is actually almost lined up. So now if you're, if this center pulley right here, center sprocket has two marks at the top, you need to roll it over 
because see the two marks are at the bottom so you need them to be right there so let's see if we can get a good picture of this I think we can So there you go, you can see the single mark at the bottom, the two marks at the top. So that's where the vacuum pump goes. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this bracket off and unbolt this pump, get this pump out of here. So this is what mounts to the back of the pump, that's how it mounts right there, three of those. Then in the front, you just have the gear, you have the, the nut right here, and take that off, it's a 27 millimeter. Uh, what I used was my Capri Flex head uh, half inch impact, and this one zapped it right off. And now we're just going to wiggle the pump side, uh, side to side and we're going to pull it out. So here's your high pressure pump right here. Uh, there's your O-ring right there that seals it to the, to the front of the engine. There's where your nut goes. This is your fuel pressure regulator or uh, I think it's an FCA. Uh, when you take it out, you're going to see metal and that's how you know for sure. So now we're going to get this all ready to get flushed, but the pump is out. So here's the seals that go on the valve cover and they seal the injector from the oil because there's a section of, uh, of cylinder head that's not uh, that's exposed to the crankcase. So do you want to make sure you replace these because once you get done, if it leaks, you have to replace an injector seal kit. The, you have to replace the line and everything else to get the valve cover out, I mean to get the seal out. So just do that here. Uh, and then I use a 23 millimeter and you're able to just put it on there like that and hit it one time and usually it seats right away. You'll be good to go. All right, so if you have metal in your fuel system, uh, one step is you need to replace this low pump here and you also need to drain the fuel tank. So what I'm doing is I'm using the low side pump right here and uh, the, the, the driver's side port is where it's pumping from. And all I did was put a power probe and I'm just applying power and ground. I'm just letting this pump pump out the fuel because I have the PCM disconnected, batteries disconnected, so you gotta drain your entire fuel tank, drop it down, and clean it out to make sure there's no metal. All right, so unboxing this fuel contamination kit, you got your new pump here, all right? You have all your new uh, supply, tube, uh, supply tubes from the rail to the injectors. You got new injector hold down bolts, and it's a hex, not a Torx anymore. You got this small piece of return line, you got both your fuel rails, okay? And then your injectors, they come in a bag and each injector, each injector has this sticker right here. This is the QA code for this injector. You need to take this and circle which injector you're putting it in and you need to write down that number because you have to program that number in the, in the, in the PCM. Okay, so each injector has a sticker like this. And this one was in this bag. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this sticker and you're gonna leave it with this injector. This is very important. You need to put this injector where you're gonna, where you're gonna put it. You need to circle what number you put it in and you have to affix these to the PCB box over here. And you, you affix them right there on that box. So that way in the future, you know that the number, let's say this is number one, that is the QA code right there. You have to program that into the PCM when you're all done. All eight of these injectors have to be programmed. So the, the first step in reassembling this fuel system is you're gonna go ahead and take your injectors, lay them out, and we're gonna put them in place, take these stickers, notate where they go. You're gonna come over here, and the injector is 22 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. So we're gonna install all eight injectors to 22 foot pounds and 90 degrees. Next step, you're gonna take both of your fuel rails and you're gonna install those to 18 foot pounds. But before you torque them, you wanna leave them a little bit loose until you get all your supply tube fittings and uh, rail assembly uh, loosely fitted. So that way you have wiggle room to wiggle it to get all the, the, the fittings attached. And then you're gonna to torque this and torque your fuel lines. So once you have your injectors torqued and your fuel rails in and loosely fitted and your pump in and torqued, you're gonna lay this across the engine, all right? Now with the EGR cooler off, I'm just gonna lay it straight out. But what, and since I don't have to do this, I'm not gonna take it apart. But what I do, if I don't take the EGR cooler off, 
The hardest part is fishing this line up under the EGR cooler. So what I do is I take a paint marker and I dab a paint drop on the top of each line. Make sure it's on top of each attachment. So I do it there. I do it on all of those. I do it there. And then what I do is I loosen this up so the, so the line can come out, keep this attached, or you could just keep it where it needs to go. Actually, it's gonna come off. You're gonna go ahead and undo this one bolt and loosen this one just so you can get the one line out. This line right here, you gotta get this one out. And the same thing here. You're gonna take this bolt out and loosen this one. Actually, you're gonna take this one out and loosen this one. Then that way you can fish this line out. And then that way you can fish it under the EGR cooler. Okay, this is the first time I've ever removed an EGR cooler for this, but I did it because I had a broken, uh, because I had a washer fall in the, in the valve cover. So once you've fished that line through, then you reattach everything, loosely tighten all the fittings, which I already talked about the torque spec, and then you're gonna get all your bolts torqued in. Once you do that, then you're gonna go ahead and do all your final torquing, which I'll tell you what the torque spec is. So your injection pump, when you slide your injection pump in, the torque spec is 18 foot-pounds for the pump, for the three uh, nuts with the spacers, and the nut is 59 foot-pounds. That's how you torque your pump. Okay, so installing your pump, your gear, your gear may fall forward. You can actually take the, the injection pump gear out of the timing cover through the vacuum pump hole. Mine fell forward. So I just wanna reiterate those two lines right there have to line up with the one line on the, the center gear. Now you may have to roll the engine just a tiny bit if you're, old, if you're new injection pump. If, the, if the, the keyway doesn't line up exactly, you may have to roll it just a tiny bit but make sure you have these lines lined up or you're gonna have big problems. So loosely install your pump with your three, uh, your three nuts and drive it up. Now this is very, very, very important. If you can see in the middle of that hole of the gear is my keyway for my pump. That is imperative that that lines up. If you don't have that exactly perfect, you could hammer off that pin and then you can ruin the engine. So make sure that is lined up, then put your nut on, and then go ahead and torque everything down. Uh, you see I have the caps off here. Go ahead and leave your caps on until you're ready to install it so you don't get any garbage in your fuel system. I'm gonna put those on now. All right, once you've got your gear torqued to 59 foot-pounds and your pump is in, put your bracket down here, your two eight millimeters, and then we're gonna put your vacuum pump on. Now here's your vacuum pump. You can see this big keyway. This is gonna go inside of the the timing gear, so that's gonna go in there, right? And then uh, also double check, do a final check on your marks. I use paint marker, uh, that way it's easier to see. And now we're gonna go ahead and torque this uh, vacuum pump down. So here's what your old low supply line looks like. You have two two-wire sensors. Uh, in my fuel contamination kit, which was ordered by VIN, came with one spot for a sensor, and it came with a four wire uh, sensor. So it took some several phone calls with Ford to find out that that was the wrong one. Obviously I knew that, but they have a they have one in Detroit. They're overnighting to get here. And they said, do not put the other one on. So anyways, I'll show you what the new one looks like when I get it. But if you have this problem, you got to go back to Ford and get it figured out. So this valve cover right here, it's 106 inch pounds all the way around the perimeter. Uh, take note of where your studded bolts go. Uh, it's very important. Um, clean your injector bores before you put your valve cover on and put your seals on before you put your valve cover on. It's easier. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and put the fuel rail on and torque it down. We're gonna go ahead and slip the injectors in. And then we're going to, uh, we're gonna do the glow plugs last, uh, glow plug uh, harness last because we have the wheel well to push them through and they get in the way with the injector connectors. And then from here, before you put this EGR cooler on, you wanna make sure you lay your, your, uh, your fuel lines across the engine because it goes under the EGR cooler right here. And if you had to do this because of like a copper washer, this is the easiest way to do the fuel tubes. But like I said, I don't remove the EGR cooler.
to do this job unless, well, unless this happened. All right, so when you open your injectors, you're gonna have a little piece of paper like this. Now you wanna be really careful and you make sure you pay attention to the injector because this one here, it shows IF83 dot 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 ending in two, but the actual injector starts with F and it ends in eight. So what you wanna do is you wanna circle the injector that you're putting it for. Remember these go on the, the PCB box. What I do is I write them all down like that. Um, I do each one at a time. I put a pink dot on each one so I know where it is uh, because I get called away a lot. And so I don't wanna take a chance on, you know, getting something mixed up. So that's what the code looks like that you're gonna input into the computer. So all I do is lay them out like that. Now the firing order is On that side, the passenger side, one, two, three, four, and then this side's five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's right there. So you're just gonna label these out. Now I'm just gonna put these away, I'll affix these later. But the, the important thing is that you make sure you get these codes. Always input these codes into the PCM. So now that I've got my injectors ready, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of lube right here on this O-ring and, um, and I'm gonna slide them all in. Uh, we have the fuel rail in lightly mounted on both sides. So now I'm gonna put the injectors in both sides and I'm gonna get all the fuel tubes started. So before you put your fuel lines on, on this side here, uh, if you did it this way, you wanna make sure that you put your, your harness on like this before you put your fuel tubes on because it goes on first. I mean, you could push it on, but it's hard to get in there. So it's best to do it now. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and connect all the glow plugs and, um, and I've, I'm gonna get all my uh, injectors. I'm not gonna connect the injectors on this side, uh, but on this side here, since I didn't disconnect anything, the injector harness comes from up here. So you can go ahead and connect your injectors, uh, but you wanna go ahead and, uh, and get all your injectors torqued. So now I'm gonna torque them, and then we're gonna put the harness over and we're gonna start laying out the, uh, the fuel lines. All right, fuel injector tubes. Normally I lay everything out the way I take it apart, but I was pulled so many different directions. You can see you have four of this one and four of that one. So I'll show you a picture here so you can see. So the right hand fuel rail. So you can see which way it goes. So there's that. And there's the left hand fuel rail just in case you lose your orientation. All right, so here we go, we're about to torque the injectors and the fuel tubes to 26 foot-pounds. And get all those torqued. All right, so one disclaimer is when you are torquing your injector, you need to be really careful of this return nipple right here. Um, your tool will hit it. So I used a crow's foot and torqued these down. I, used, I torqued this whole side with a crow's foot wrench. Um, and you just have to really watch out for that return nipple because you'll break that injector. So it's not too bad. Make sure that your long part of your nut, see one, one of your tubes, one is short and one is tall. The tall one goes to the injector and that allows you to get up and above this return nipple. All right, last step is the, the trickiest part, just getting this routed the right way. You got to put this return line assembly on. Um, this is probably the trickiest part of it. Uh, with the EGR cooler off, it's gonna be a lot easier to get it in there. Um, I think I'm gonna start removing the EGR cooler from now on when I do this, because it sure seemed like it was a lot easier. So anyways, so we're gonna get this. Make sure that you route it the right way through the front of the engine here. Um, I would recommend doing it before you put your EGR cooler back on, because you don't have anything in the way. This is normally up against your EGR cooler. Uh, and it's got to go like through this harness. It's got to go like down through there and up around here. So get that on. EGR cooler back on. Just reassembly time. Torque spec for the EGR cooler is 89 inch pounds for the seven bolts. Don't forget the nut back there for the bracket for the, the exhaust uh, sensor. And uh, don't forget to tighten that down back there and get your clips on the back of the cooler. All right, so the last step in doing this uh, 
is you're going to go right here to fuel injection, fuel injector quantity adjustment. And this is where you're going to program the injectors. And remember we had our, our codes written down. So now I'm going to go through and program all these injectors and get her started. All right, here we are. Truck is running. I think it took about four or five key cycles to get it running. Four or five uh, key crankings, I should say. And we're good to go. Now I just got to put the wheel wells in, put the tires on. Now that you've seen this video, I'm sure that you feel confident doing this repair. If you're a gasoline mechanic and you're given this job to do because it's just a mechanical repair, now you'll be able to do it. And you'll be able to do it with, with, uh, with absolution and completion because now you understand how it works. Diesels are a lot different than gas as far as the repairs and everything has to be more precise. And you have to watch for little bits of dirt, things like that, that gasoline is well way more forgiving for. So thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all the future content, which you definitely do not want to miss. Check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone. For my daily life as a mechanic, show you all kinds of cool stuff, show you tools I'm using, things I'm working on, and uh, show you tools you don't want to use. I do that when I come across something, as I've bought a lot of tools over the years, and some of them are kind of crap. So also check out my merchandise store. You can get yourself a t-shirt or a coffee cup. And below, I have a link to my new Amazon affiliate store where I'm putting links to all the different products that I use and that I recommend that you buy so you don't have to break the bank with the Snap-on truck. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.